Hello students, we are going to learn today about the sculptures in India and the surrounding areas. The, uh, the sculptures are, uh, when we have to understand the sculptures, how they uh, develop, we have to look at the people who had brought these traditions into India and these areas. The tradition that came into India was through the trade routes, is the centre where art would flourish and second would be the riverbed as food, water and shelter are essential elements of a for a human being to survive. And third factor probably would be the patronage that a king, a raja would be giving to these areas of schools and that's how this development in art takes place. We already know about Bharut, how the Buddhist concept had been brought up in symbolic representations. But these schools that we are about to study, Mathura and Gandhara, along with certain pockets of other schools which were surrounding these areas were Sarnath, Taxila area, Lumbini Gardens and, and uh, so the areas where Buddhism had slowly taken it, its birth. So what we are here highlighting is from these areas, the important factor is that religious-centric or Buddhism was a dominant factor here, though Jainism and Hinduism were not far behind. Many sculptures from these areas have also been found which belong to these specific uh, religions. These sculptures reveal the essential elements of these social, economic and uh, political uh, developments that took place in these schools. First and foremost, we will see how Mathura School of Art had developed. As we have studied about our, we are reading about the trade routes, the travelers, the scholars, the people who wanted to explore uh, India and the areas, they had come into, uh, into Punjab, India, through the Bulan and the Khyber passes. When they entered India, they had found that this, these areas were fertile, not only in their agricultural aspect, but also in their cultural heritage. So uh, Mathura essentially has an indigenous kind of art that we find where uh, the characteristic features belong specifically to the uh, Indian thought. Gandhara in Afghanistan was the area from where the ancient trades had, uh, they became the important link and they, it was an area of transshipment. Here people from different areas had also poured in and uh, the foreigners who had come into India were the Bactrian Greeks, they were the Parthians, the Sakas, the Kushanas. Kushanas were the major patrons to these arts which had developed in these areas. And that is why uh, we have to look at how and what was their important areas of significance. Kushanas had given patronage to the artists to render the work of um, all three religions, that's Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism of that time. Uh, Buddhism had dominated here because of the teachings that had been given but Jainism and Hinduism had also some reliefs of Ganesh, of Mother Goddess which we also observe in these areas in the form of reliefs. In Gandhara we find that there are the, in, uh, the strong influences of Greek which is also referred to as the Greco-Roman art. These are referred to as the Greco-Bactrian Greeks, they are also referred to as the Roman uh, influences that we see in the Gandharan art and they had brought in with them these foreigners who had brought into them the intrinsic values in the field of art. In Gandhara we find that uh, the sculptures are heavily ornamented. There we uh, notice certain uh, jewellery uh, that is uh, on their body and that is giving them a round, rounded format. The contour of the body is well measured, organised and complete body parts are according to the measurement of the vest. Here the production, the, the complete artwork is a mechanical representation of the forms. Buddha here appeared in the form of um, Apollo, Greek god, and what they had learnt from the academic tradition is what has been adopted in these sculptures. 
while we travel to uh, here, the centers were also taxilla. And as we move on towards uh, the, from the Khyber and the Bulan passes towards Mathura, Mathura was an important center of uh, Buddhist development of art where the, uh, under the Kushanas, uh, the patronage which was given to them was to the artists who had taken training, the craftsmen who had taken training from the Indian uh, standards. What was specific about uh, Mathura was the depiction of complete indigenous character, the, uh, the form, for, it was without jewellery. They had given more importance to the body parts. They had laid more stress on the uh, meditation aspect and also on the element of uh, yogic uh, posture and on the concentration element. This was the basic uh, um, uh, contribution that Mathura school had given. Kushana patronage that they received in Mathura was um, uh, again of significant importance as uh, uh, there was also some scenes which were made of uh, social awareness. We know about the people who, who, what kind of dresses they wore, what was their traditional format, what was the social rendering at that time, what religion they practiced and what was uh, their economical uh, status. At that time, what was uh, uh, what we actually come to know about the lifestyle of what they practiced at that time uh, in Mathura. These uh, the reflections of art in Mathura are uh, completely Indianized forms that we observe here, and the element of uh, meditative style is seen in Mathura. told me he is a prolific writer he speaks about Mathura as the daughter of gods he says in 2nd century BC these sculptures had very essential uh, indigenous character and uh, they were in the later period though there was some influence of Hellenistic or Greek art but in these uh, areas where this uh, art was developed in Mathura uh, this had completely Indianized characteristic features and secondly, there were the transcendental element of spiritual understanding of the religion of Buddhism, fullness of form in the body, vigorous naturalism, which uh, was rendered by the artist, rounded contour of faces, strong Indianized characterized features that is round face, broad nose and well organized lips. There was a tranquil uh, face and a beaming representation that is seen here in the sculptures. First and foremost, when we go through, I take you through the sculptures of Vima Cadphysis because he was the one, Vima, King Vima was the one who had given patronage for the Mathura sculptures. He has been represented wearing big boots, which are definitely alien to the Mathura concept, but he has been shown as a full bodied figure with vigorous element in his, present in his body, bold chest and his seated uh, posture is indianized and there's a sword that he is carrying along with uh, his form and it is three dimensional three dimensional in the sense that uh, from the back if we see it is not carved but in the frontal aspect we will find that it has been well defined the second sculpture is of kanishk he has been shown the head although has not been shown but there's a crude draftsmanship that you observe here and uh, the form is bold, which is again an Indian aspect. Kobair has been represented here as a pot-bellied god. And he is uh, pleasantly done in line. The linear quality is very strong. And he's also shown fleshy and full-bodied. The image of Buddha is seen from Katra. This particular sculpture is uh, made up in mottled red sandstone. And he's shown in diaphanous clothing that is slightly transparent, a complete body uh, element is seen. There is an essential element of prana, that is the breath intake and exhale, exhaling of the breath. And there's a rest where this particular, uh, the element of prana is existing here. There's also in Katra, certain, uh, the Buddha, we find that the Lakshan scene. Lakshan is a Sanskrit term, which means uh, there'll be certain elements from where we recognize that he is a Buddha. And he, Buddha means he has attained enlightenment and he has the complete knowledge of his self, awareness of his self 
and the luxures that we see are elongated ear lobes they are uh, exaggerated elongated which are highlighting the knowledge the element of knowledge then we have urn that is uh, behind between the two eyebrows there's a raised forehead portion and it's in the form of a dot that's also an indicative of knowledge and then we find that there's ushanisha that is the raising of a slight forehead and also the hairline is receding and we can sometimes find here that a bun is seen in the on the top of the head that is holding the hair in katra buddha we also see vidyadhars who are shown flying at the back which is again an influence from uh, not not an indian uh, aspect which has been shown here it has been picked up from the putti representations of the west buddha images from uh, ahichatra has also been found here from mathura a mathra buddha has been found in sculptural form and he uh, is depicting the future buddha here some of the other images are of yakshi apsaras and vrakshakas Apsara and Vrakshakas are the ones who are the women, full bodied women who are depicting or are indicative of fertility symbol and they are hanging onto the trees or they are clinging onto the trees so intimately that uh, they will bring them to life even uh, out of season. I will now go on to Gandhara school that is uh, the basic uh, the place where it is, is in Afghanistan and Gandhara lies on the important trade route ancient trade route which leads into India and this was an important center where we find that this style had a strong influence of Hellenistic or Greek Roman culture it is also referred to as the Greco Buddhist art. We find that foreign craftsmanship dominates here and the Greek characteristic features of measurement of uh, body, the distance between the eyebrows, the, uh, between the nose and the eyes, the, between the lips and the nose and the complete measurement of the body is according to the Greek standards and measurements. We find here that Mahayana texts have been related to and Prajna Paramita text which is a very important text in, uh, in the understanding of Buddhism has been referred to here in Gandhara school. Gandhara and Taxila were the two important centers of transshipment where uh, many people from different clans had walked into, had uh, converged, had settled down and that is why it became a very important center of art. Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism all three existed here and we find some of the representations of Ganesha and Mother Goddess also which have been represented but essentially we find that they are related to Buddhism. Dharma, Buddha, it is divided into three that is three Ratna, the form of three Ratna that is Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. Buddha, I have already told you is about enlightenment of receiving knowledge. Dharma is the law which he's practiced and was preached at Sarnath. This was the first sermon. And Sangha is the congregation of people who had accumulated together to understand the law which was taught by Buddha. In the characteristic features that we have to understand when we look at a sculpture, the features, the facial features are related to the Greeks, the of Apollo, the god, Hermes, all have been found uh, in, the, in the depiction of uh, the sculptures here. The body alignment and classical style of drapery is experienced in Gandhara. Vivid interplay of light and shade is seen here. There is wakefulness and intentness of the western god which is depicted and the facial features, the eyes are slightly elongated, the nose is equestine, the lips are tender and they have uh, the face, face of a Greek god. The representation of the uh, calm aloofness is also experienced in these sculptures. There's extreme concentration of mind that we find in these in the sculpture here, and uh, no spontaneity probably has been experienced. It seems as if it's a mechanical representation of what the, the they have learnt in their academic works. There's a rhythmic touch though, and it seems very charming to um, take a look at the sculptures. One of the Bimran reliquary, reliquary is the container, a holy container which contains the ashes or the important remains of Buddha or a person who has reached that status. So that reliquary made out of gold and that gold is embellished with rubies and there are figures which have been shown in motion. That's the uh, important aspect which we see here. In uh, the Greek art, we also find Apollo, uh, who has been represented as in the image of Buddha. 
uh, and Yaksha Kuber is also seen as the Zeus of um, Greeks. The drapery here follows the Hellenistic modes as we see in the Greek art. Buddha from Loria Tongai is also observed. Uh, this is another sculpture which is dressed in a toga. That's a Roman dress which we find here. Don't well aligned, voluted lines are seen on the sculpture. And uh, the facial features are again very calm and uh, serene. Here, it is another sculpture of Buddha from that is Charsada that is seen with an ur on his uh, forehead. That is uh, the, between the eyebrows. There's a raised forehead portion. It's a form of a dot and this is an ind indicative of knowledge. And we also find some of the early Buddha representations where there are locks of hair represented in the form of sea or conch shells. <laughs> So now it's very important to understand what were the basic differences in the characteristic features of uh, Mathura and Gandhara because both of them were aware about each other or they had influence uh, in a way because travellers were going in from the trade routes and reaching the areas in Mathura and this was the m most important ancient trade route and they were travelling through that trade route and this is how uh, the influences could be seen. In Gandhar, we find that there's a complete act or complete rendering done by the craftsmen who were trained in the measurements, the depiction of Greek art, of the god Apollo, how um, the beauty of uh, art by Western standards is observed, is seen in Gandhara art. Whereas in Mathura, we find it is indigenous character. We uh, find that there are Indian uh, vibrations which are observed here and there is a lot of stress that is given on the bodily uh, feature and more on the emotive part of it. Whereas in Gandhara we find them very plain, simple, but they are, they are probably at times passionless also, mechanical presentations of uh, human forms. In the clothing, as we come down to the drapery, there we find that the voluted lines are uh, the lines that are indicating the end of the drapery, that is around the, uh, either the neck, the arms, the legs, where the toga ends, is in the form of a single line and is depicted in the Greek influence. Whereas in, in Mathura art, it is completely Indian. Every line delineates the bodily texture, bodily form, the adipose, and all are depicted in as if they have lived with the image. In Gandhara art, we find strengths that is depicted of the Western style where uh, Greek gods depiction is shown whereas in Mathura art it is uh, completely based on meditation, concentration and the element of pran. So these schools were the most important schools of uh, um, this period and this brings us to the human representations for the very first time uh, which we find uh, for Buddha. Otherwise, the symbolic representations of lotus in Padamchin, uh, the ladder of Trushita heaven or uh, Buddha in the form of a tree, a bow tree uh, were seen earlier but here we find that they have been shown in a human representation. The rest of the schools which had developed in small pockets around uh, Mathura were uh, also important though few sculptures are kept in the museum at, um, uh, and the richest collection that we find in the museum is an Indian Museum Calcutta. There are certain uh, sculptures which are found in a new museum at New Delhi, National Museum New Delhi and the largest collection of Gandharan sculptures are in Chandigarh Museum, Sector 10. I uh, hope that we are able to reach to uh, a basic understanding of the Gandharan sculptures, the Mathura sculptures and how they are different from each other and how maintaining their basic intrinsic qualities they have they are masterpieces in their own rights. Thank you students.